Chapter 4 In Which War is Declared and Honor Established Harris stopped at the gate to the yard fence, a combination of boards nailed vertically and square netted sheep fencing, and studied the yard. Ernie was near the granary, pecking and scratching with the chickens, and Harris nodded. Good, he's busy. You want to play war? I looked at the rooster. You mean with Ernie? I didn't know for sure what Harris meant by play war, maybe not the same as me, which was setting up imaginary enemies and fighting them, but I was pretty sure any Ernie didn't take prisoners, and I wasn't about to play with him unless I had at least a machine gun. Gnaw the pigs. I pretend the pigs are commie japs and sneak up on them. You know, just pretend. Commie japs? I had lived in the Philippines a year after Japanese occupation, and understood thinking of the Japanese as enemies, but I had never heard of the term commie japs. What are they? It's what Louie calls them. The pigs? No. Louie almost went to fight in the war, and he said the people we was going to fight were commie japs, so I just call the pigs that and then fight them. He moved toward the granary. Let's go. I got guns over here. His guns were two narrow boards, one of which he'd used to pound on early, Ernie earlier, but with a little imagination they worked. I kept a wary eye on the rooster until Harris saw me and shook his head. Don't worry, he won't come at you if, he, if you see him. Only you don't see him, then watch it. And so we made, went to make war on the pigs, Harris on the right, me on the left, keeping one eye over my back on Ernie should he decide to enter the fray. Our enemies lay sublimely ignorant of our intentions, or so I thought, buried in a stew of mud with grain slop all over their noses, stomachs rumbling, grunting happily. There were three sows in one pen, a boar in another, and one sow and still another, with ten or so piglets that were small enough to get through the fence if they wanted to. Look at em, Harris whispered as we made our assault. Dirty commie japs, laying there like they own the world. I nodded dirty commies, which was at least partially true. They were, if possible, even dirtier than Louie. You ready? I nodded again, working an imaginary bolt on my board rifle. Ready. I'll go right, you go left. Harris started for them in a crouch, gun raised, one foot slowly in front of the other. Left, I repeated, and mimicked his form. My mistake was in becoming too intense. I'm not sure what I expected. Maybe something along the lines of getting close to the enemy and then blasting them with heavy fire before they had a chance to escape. But I had a good imagination, and inside of two steps, they weren't pigs any longer. They were commie japs who wanted to rule the world, and we were the only thing between their evil ambition and the true American way. And whatever Harris did, I would back him up. I would follow. And what Harris had in mind was hand-to-hand -hand combat. Ten feet from the pig pen, Harris looked back at me, a strange glint in his eye, and silently raised an eyebrow in question. I nodded, ready to follow him, ready for anything, ready. He waved his arm in the classic infantry follow-me wave and screamed, Ah! Die, you commie jap pigs! He threw his board gun aside hit the pen at a dead run, vaulted over the low board fence, and leapt spread-eagled onto the sows. If asked later if I fully intended to follow Harris and jump into a pig pen, I would have den denied it. You could smell the pig crap fifty yards from the pen. But this was war. My imagination had taken me, and caught up in the intensity of it all, I was much too far gone to know what I was doing and I landed on the sows not two feet behind him, screaming something incoherent. It is possible the sows had never been commie japs before, although since Harris lived there, it's doubtful they could have, have missed out on such entertainment long. And it is also possible Harris had never jumped on them before in just this way, screaming and stabbing with an imaginary knife, although, again, with Harris there all the time, it's doubtful. But I think it's fairly certain the sows had never been jumped on by two boys wielding imaginary knives, screaming death and mayhem at the top of their lungs. The effect was cataclysmic. Pig dung and mud went thirty feet in the air in a spray that seemed to block the sun, and I learned, 
along with the fact that I had made a terrible mistake, something about basic physics. A lighter object, say, a falling hundred-pound boy, cannot hope to move a heavier object, say, a three-hundred-pound sow. Added to that was the realization that a sow covered in mud is too slippery to hang on to, and the final knowledge that the sows only seemed lethargic and were up and ready to do battle with any and all forces in less than a second. We never had a chance. I landed on a sow, grabbed, slipped, and was driven into the mud and pig crap by a hoof in the middle of my back. Out of the corner of one eye I saw the same thing happen to Harris, though he fought well on the way down, stabbing right and left, and then all was lost. What actually happened is now blurred in confusion. I was up, Harris was up, I was down, Harris was down. We were pushed, pummeled, tossed and rooted, pounded into the muck, rolled into balls and tossed like garbage back out of the pen. I'm blind, I can't see, I screamed. I had pig crap under my eyelids. Where are you, Harris? Something grabbed my hand and jerked me, and I pulled back, thinking one of the sows still had me. It's me, Harris yelled in my ear. Come on, we gotta get down to the river. And he was laughing. You look like a giant pig turd. Come on, let's get in the river. A small river, little more than a creek, really, flowed along the farm in lazy S's that made shallow pools. Harris took my hand and dragged me through the pasture fence, across rough ground that kept tripping me, and into three feet of cold water. I went down like a whale, sloshing back and forth, my mouth and eyes open. I had the muck inside my mouth as well, and didn't come up until all I tasted was water. Harris was on the bank, dripping wet, rolling and slamming the ground with his fist, laughing so hard I thought he would choke. It wasn't funny, I said. I think I ate pig crap. Minnie, he choked back, trying to talk. Minnie! Minnie almost died when you landed on her. He was off again, gasping and wheezing. And when I thought of the sow I landed on, apparently Minnie, and remembered her little pig eyes looking up at me as I came down, I started smiling, then giggling, and pretty soon both of us were rolling on the side of the river, and we didn't stop laughing until I heard Claire yell something from the house. Harris rolled to his feet. Come on. What is it? Lunch, he yelled back at me, running toward the house. Forenoon lunch. But we just ate a few minutes ago. Did not. Hell, it's been close to an hour, maybe more. Come on. You want Louie to get all the cake? It wasn't a full meal, like the two breakfasts. There was sliced Velveeta cheese, some homemade bread, slices of meat, I found later to be smoked venison, pickles, and a large cake with chocolate frosting in a rectangular metal pan. The problem was that the food was all sitting on the table ready for us, and Louie was already there free feeding, so when we got there a lot of the sandwich fixings were gone and about half the cake, and Louie was sitting at the table with crumbs and bits of cheese and bread all over him. Newt was drinking another cup of coffee, staring at the table and we ate silently, standing, dripping by the door, each with a sandwich in one hand, a piece of cake in the other. Nobody asked why, why we were soaking wet or what we had been doing, which I thought strange, until I remembered that they had been exposed to Harris much longer than me and were probably used to anything. The East Forty is ready for mowing. For a moment, the words didn't register. It seemed to be the voice of God talking. A deep voice, almost booming, and I actually looked up to the ceiling. Then I realized it was Newt. I stared at him, but nobody else seemed to take notice, and he was still sitting, drinking coffee, staring at the same point on the table. But his words seemed to excite Harris, who smiled and went outside, still eating cake. I followed, licking frosting from my fingers, and caught him at the gate when he stopped to make sure he could see Ernie. What's up? Paul's going to mow. So? So we get to ride the team. Oh. I had absolutely no idea what he was talking about. Good. That will be fun. And hunt mice. Mice? Man, Harris shook his head. You don't know nothing, do you? 